Welcome to another doll customizing video. This time I have the 3D printed Rabbit BJD created by Doll Lightful and modified by Moonlight Jewel. Both artists did an incredible job on it. So this. Oh gosh, Dark Nut, right when I press record. Obviously is not great, but it's what I- <sighs> For f**k's sake! So I'm stringing this doll up with some cheap bracelet elastic, which obviously isn't great, but it was what I had on hand at the time, and since this is going to be getting sprayed and painted on and put through all sorts of other torment, I don't care too much about having something perfect for the time being. This is the first BJD I've ever had, first time stringing one up, so I really didn't know what to expect going in. I used a separate elastic for each leg, which um, in my opinion now is definitely not the efficient way of doing it. The models for the hands and feet don't have anything to latch the little S hooks onto, so I kind of had to improvise and figure that one out on the spot. Ah! The acrylic paint came out faster than I had expected. And I guess that noise was just my reaction to that. At this point, I've already gone over the base doll with black acrylic paint to remove the sanding lines and just give it a nice uniform complexion. Now I'm just blocking in the white areas to add some definition and contrast, most especially around the face and stomach. How about those pitch black eye sockets that just kind of emerge from the void as the face is defined? Gotta love a little bit of unintended creep factor. Adding a couple of little white swooshies to the forehead region because it just adds a little bit of interest to the face in what is otherwise pretty simple design. Now I'm putting in some soft gradient and blocking out simple regions using some Crayola watercolor pencils. It can be blended using my fingertip or a moist q-tip. It takes quite a lot of layering and building up for it to really look like anything though. Pencils are my friends, pencils will bring about your end, 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 mm. Drawing on the PLA plastic with colored pencils has a very satisfying click to it. So there's some real legitimacy to the theory of watercolor pencils. Where's my sanding puber? It's my art channel and I'll move upstairs to work in my office if I want to. Here I go adding the ear veins and blushing to really give her that adorable lifelike vibe. Throughout the process of the face up, I do seal it a couple of times. It helps the pigment build up a little more and also keeps my work from smudging. And red in the tear ducts.
Also doing blushing and subtle vein work in her stomach region to really give it that juicy prey animal vibe that predators love so much, especially foxes. Now I'm brushing red acrylic paint on around the waterline to give her eyes that sort of puffy, irritated, been crying all day look. As my poo evades capture by the toilet, will you be there holding me? Now I'm brushing gloss Mod Podge onto the nose, lip, and waterline to give it that more lifelike, shiny look. That lifelike, shiny look signature to moist tissues. Now I am sifting through glass eyes I stole from my mom to select a pair. I picked this yellow pair that I think gives her a nice frightened look like she just saw a fox. Getting them in is a huge hassle and I have to go upstairs to wash glue residue off of them multiple times, but I get them in with hot glue. I make her hair from a variegated skein of yarn with these lovely yellows and slate blues. I unravel them, glue them into wefts, and simply glue them onto her head. Onto clothing, here I am cutting the shell and lining fabric at the same time to keep things simple, stitching the lining and shell together for the bodice. It's Time for a tasting stitch. <laughs> Touchscreen is just slightly temperamental, but that's okay. I sew a basting stitch into the skirt so that I can pull it into a nice gather. A nice amount of thread that I can actually grab onto with my dirty fingies. And of course, once again, I left my pincushion in the other room because... I'm a forgetful little lady, okay? It, it's hard. It's hard. It just, it's hard. Where are the goddamn bloody toots? I dropped a pen. Oh no. Do, 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 do. Now I'll be finding it with my big toe. Now stitching the skirt and bodice pieces together. For decoration, I stitch a gathered ribbon to the edge of the shell and a length of lace to the edge of the lining. Making the shoulder straps, making the shoulder straps, I left my pin cushion out in the other room again. Eh. Hey, nobody ever said that sewing was easy. Anyway, here I go hand stitching shoulder straps onto the dress, made with more of the shell fabric along with a little bit of the lace. I had to try a couple of different elastics before I found something thick and stiff enough that, oh that doesn't sound right, <laughs> thick and stiff enough that she could stand and hold poses. Inspired by her black fur, I named her Dahlia, or Dolly for short. A huge thank you to both Dollightful and Moonlight Jewel for creating this incredible 3D printable doll. I seriously recommend checking both of them as well as the 3D model out. I will leave links to all of that in the description. And with that, enjoy the rest of these photos.